Hello, everybody. Get ready to do lesson 5.3, part one, uh, classwork today, pre calculus math. Uh, students and teachers, email me here if you need course materials. Today's classwork, you got four points here, students, for your notebook. And then there's a 60 point classwork sheet that goes with this, teachers. You should have that. If you don't, email me for those materials. Today's bell work, teachers. Uh, in exercises, these exercises here, convert the angle measure, the angle measure here, from degrees into radians. Students, round your answer to three decimal places. So go from degrees to radians here. Give your students about five minutes. Okay, welcome back for the solutions of today's bell work. 124 degrees, when you convert that into radians, here is your conversion factor here, pi over 180, and that comes out to 2.164 radians for that. And then 486 times pi over 180 comes out to 8.482 radians for this one here, students. So check yourself on that. To our lesson today, uh, your notebook uh, students have your notebook out. Introduction to this lesson to solve a trig trigonometric equation, use standard algebraic techniques such as collecting like terms and factoring. Your preliminary goal is to isolate the trigonometric function involved in the equation. So we need to isolate our trig function on one side to solve the Okay, so let's get into an example here of solving a trigonometric equation. We're going to start we're going to start out with this one here which is uh, uh, solve 2 sine x minus 1 equals 0. So here's our original equation here. So we're going to move this over here. We're going to move on isolating our sine x here, add 1 to each side. And then divide through by 2 on each side. So now we're left with sine x equals 1 half. And then the equation sine x equals 1 half has uh, solutions at pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6 on this interval here. Here is a graph of this function here. So when sine x equals 1 half, we have x equals pi over 6 minus 2 pi. And then down here, here is a... Um, here is your center line here for this. <clears throat> pi over 6 plus 2 pi here, and then pi over 6 here, and then y equals 1 half is right here. So this line here will, will expose your solutions right here of this uh, equation up here. So y equals 1 half. Then we come up with solutions here. Pi over 6 minus 2 pi is over here. 5 pi over 6 minus 2 pi would be here. So wherever your sine curve, this sine curve, sine x equals 1 half, crosses your line here of uh, 1 half, these are your solutions here. Isn't that cool? Just two points here, students. So take, put this in your classwork. Page 3 on your class worksheet, students. Moreover, because sine x has a period of 2 pi, there are infinitely many other solutions, which can be written as x equals pi over 6 plus 2m pi. So it will go on forever here. And x equals 5 pi over 6 plus 2m pi. So you could go either to infinity this way and to infinity that way to find solutions here that cross this y equals 1 half horizontal line here. Let's try one now, okay? 2 sine x plus 1 equals 0. So to solve this one here, 2 sine x, we're going to move this over here, negative 1, then we're going to divide through by, uh, by 2, then we get sine x equals negative 1 half, and then you can graph this too to uh, uh, to corroborate with the fact that x will equal 7 pi over 6 plus 2 n pi, and x will also equal 11 pi over 6 plus 2 n pi here. Then down here, this would be your solution here, students. This is a freebie for you, square root of, of 2 sine x, 
square root of 2 times sine x plus 1. You come up with these uh, solutions here, 5 pi over 4 plus 2n pi, and then 7 pi over 4 plus 2n pi. And if you graph this here, sine x equals a negative 1 over a square root of 2, these are the solutions here where you will cross, your sine curve will cross uh, uh, the sine curve. Okay, onward into our class worksheet here. Another way to show that the equation sine x equals 1 half has infinitely many solutions is indicated in the figure here. So we have a, a unit circle here. This is your angle here, pi over 6, and this is your 5 pi over 6 angle over here. So any angles that are coterminal with pi over 6 or 5 pi over 6 over 6 are also, and then this would be a solution here. This would be another way to express this uh, side here it would be sine 5 pi over 6 plus 2 n pi equals 1 half over here, and then the same thing over here. So you're in quad 1 and in quad 2 with your solutions there. So are also solutions of the equation. So any angles that are coterminal with pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6 are also solutions to this equation. So it helps to have limits to your solutions. Let's go into another one here, <clears throat> collecting like terms. So finding all solutions of sine x plus the square root of 2 equals negative sine x. So in now we, get, we have stipulations here. In the interval, this is close here, and, and this is open over here from 0 to 2 pi. So rewrite the equation so that sine x is isolated on one side of the equation. So sine x plus square root of 2 equals negative sine x. Write the original. So now we're going to add sine x to and subtract square root of 2 from each side. So when we do that, we're going to add sine x, and then we're going to get rid of this negative sine x. And then we're going to uh, subtract negative square root of 2 from each side. Then once we do that, <clears throat> we end up with this over here. 2 sine x equals negative square root of 2. And then we're going to divide each side by 2 to get rid of this here. So we have sine x now. We have negative the negative of square root of 2 over 2. And the solutions in the interval of 0 uh, to pi are x equals 5 pi over 4. That will be 1 here. That it corroborates with that. And x equals 7 pi over 4, which uh, <clears throat> is uh, corroborates with this uh, solution as well in radian form for that. So numerical solution using a graphing calculator set in radian mode to create a table that shows the values of y1 equals sine x plus square root of 2 and y2 equals the negative sine x for different values of x. Your table should go from x equals 0 to x equals 2 pi using increments of pi over 8. So this would be the table here that shows the solution to that equation here. The values of y1, y2 appear to be identical. So here's y1, y2 at 3.927. They appear to be identical, 5.4978. These are identical here. So when x equals 3.927 equals 5 pi over 4, which is this here, 5 pi over 4 is here. And then, and then 5.4978 is uh, 7 pi over 4, which is see 5 pi over 4 which equals 7 pi over 4 down here so x equals 5 pi x equals 5.4978 these values are approximate solutions of sine x plus square root of 2 equals negative sine x so so x equals 5 pi uh, 5.49 this big long number here y1 and y2 are are equal, so this is a solution as well, and then this is a solution as well as up here. So that proves that 5 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4 are solutions 
to that equation. That's pretty cool that you use a graphing calculator to do that. So find all solutions of the equation in an interval of 0 to 2 pi algebraically. Use the table feature of your graphing utility to check your answers numerically. So tan x plus square root of 3 equals 0, and then sine x plus 1 equals 0. So for up here, your guide of practice here, tan x equals negative square root of 3, and then x, in this case up here, will equal 2 pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3 algebraically. Down here, a sine x would equal negative 1, so that would be 3 pi over 2 would be your solution to this trig function. Okay, onward here to example 3, extracting square roots. So, solving 3 tan squared x minus 1 equals 0, rewrite this equation up here so that the tan x is isolated on one side of the equation. So Here's our original. Let's isolate. Let's move to isolate our 3 tan x, uh, uh, tan squared x, on one side here. So we add one to each side. Then we divide through by three, and we end up with this here: tan squared x equals one over three. And then once we do that, we end up with tan x equals plus or minus one over the square root of 3, which after you rationalize your denominator here, you end up with square root of 3 over 3. Because tan x has a period of pi, first find all the solutions in, in the interval 0 to pi. These are pi over 6, which would equal uh, square root of 3 over uh, 3, and x would equal 5 pi over 6. Finally, add multiples of r to each of these solutions to get the general form of pi over 6 plus n pi and phi pi over 6 plus n pi. So these, this here would be your uh, general solution to the original. So once we graph that thing where n is an integer, you can confirm this answer by graphing y equals 3 times tan squared x minus 1. And the graph has x-intercepts at pi over 6. Pi over 6 would be somewhere in here. And then 5 pi over 6 would be somewhere here. And 7 pi over 6 and so on. These x-intercepts correspond to the solutions of 3 times tan squared x Minus 1 equals 0, and then this would be what your graph would look like here. You have these, like, uh, almost like parabolas, like three parabolas that are pointed upwards here. And then here's your intercepts here and there. Let's try one now. Uh, find all the solutions of the equation on the interval of, of 0 to 2 pi. Algebraically, use the table feature of your graphing calculator to check your answers numerically for these two here. So cosecant squared x minus 2 equals 0. Tan squared x minus 1 equals 0. So algebraically here, we got to isolate our cosine squared x. And we do, and then we take the radical of each side. We end up plus or minus square root of 2. And this, we get to our sine x here, which is 1 over plus or minus 1 over square root of 2, which gets into the square root of 2 over 2. And your solutions for that are here. So that would be your algebraic. We don't, um, I mean, you can use your table here to check these here uh, for your, on your graphing calculator, you can check that. And then down here, same thing. And then we end up with our solutions here for this expression. In your notebook, the equations in examples one, examples one through three, involved only one trigonometric function. When two or more functions occur in the same equation, collect all terms on one side and try to separate the functions by factoring or by using appropriate identities. This may produce factors that yield no solution as we will find out here in this example here. Example 4 of factoring, solve cotan x cosine squared x equals 2 cotan x. 
So I begin by writing the equation. So all terms are collected on one side of the equation. So okay, we can do that. So here's the original. So we're going to move our two cotan x over here. We end up with this now here on this side. And then we factor out a cotan x from this. And we get cosine squared x minus 2 now. So we have the equation here. What are we supposed to do with that? Well, by setting each of these factors equal to 0, so we use the zero product property here. Cotan x equals 0, and cosine squared x minus 2 would equal 0. So in here, cosine squared x equals 2, that would equal 0. Then cosine x would equal plus or minus uh, the square root of 2 would be another 0 there for that. So in an interval of 0 to pi, the equation cotan x equals 0 has the solution of x equals pi over 2. And no solution is for uh, cosine x equals plus or minus square root of 2 because uh, uh, square root plus or minus cos cosine uh, plus or minus square root of 2 are outside the range of the cosine function because uh, cotan x has a period of pi. The general form of the solution is obtained by adding multiples of pi to x equals pi over 2. To get x equals pi over 2 plus n pi, that would be your general solution where n is an integer. The graph of y equals cotan x cosine squared x minus 2 cotan x in dot mode here is shown. And then this conforms uh, this result so that you can see that the x-intercepts occur here. So the, these two um, equations are the same. So the, uh, the, um, <clears throat> the other form of this equation is confirmed to be equal to the original by graphing it. So you can use your graphing calculator in that. So y equals cotan cotan x cosine squared x minus 2 cotan x is here. This is the graph of that. And then you have your uh, x-intercepts negative pi over 2, pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, and 5 pi over 2 here. Those are your x-intercepts for that, and so on. These x-intercepts correspond to the solutions of cotan x cosine squared x equals co 2 cotan x. So they are the same expression. Let's go into an example here. Uh, use the table feature for cosine cubed x equals uh, cosine x. And then down here, 2 sine squared x equals 2 plus cosine x. So up here for the first one here, um, let's get this so we can put everything over on this side. And we end up with the factoring out cosine x. And we have cosine squared x minus 1 equals 0. And then cosine x would equal 0, or cosine squared x minus 1 equals 0. So here would be your zeros for this. And then over here, your zeros for this would be x equals 0, or pi would be your zeros for this situation here. Down here, we put everything over on this side, and we end up with this here. Then we factor out a cosine x, and we end up with cosine x times 2 cosine x plus 1. And then uh, from this expression, we have cosine x equals 0, or 2 cosine x plus 1 equals 0. And for that to happen, x would have to equal pi over 2, 3 pi over 2 for here. And then for here, uh, we would have cosine x equals negative 1 half, which uh, for your uh, radian equivalent of that, it would be 2 pi over 3 or 4 pi over 3 for that one. And that is your 5.3 part one. And you have any questions, you need course materials, you need PowerPoints, you need correction PowerPoints for homework, email me there. Thank you very much.